ano yung mga mensahe na pinaparating ng ating mga nakatutok na kababayan mula sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Europa at Pilipinas, Middle East at kung sa ampang bahagi ng mundo, malalaman natin yan sa mga comment nila. Go ahead, Jean. You have um, some greetings there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, actually, meron tayong viewer na si Joyce Takahashi mm. na nanonood from Japan. Hi, Joyce! Hi, Joyce. Salamat uh, sa mo, Joyce, ha? At nandyan din ang ating uh, kaibigan na uh, si Neil Kaburnaitiero mula sa Russia. Hi, uh, hi, Neil. At ang isa pang Neil na nanonood kanina, si Neil... Uh, ang kaibigan natin na nag-celebrate ng 70th birthday, Neil Medina. Oh, Neil Medina from London. Oo, nandyan siya. Nakita ko rin kanina nag-wave yung um, dito. Okay. okay. Another one? Oh, si Allen. Alam ko si Allen is from Ireland. Pakipush uh, nga natin yan, Chad, yung message ni Allen. Yes, Alice, Allen is a veteran uh, trade union activist. And uh, I believe an officer, so he knows a lot about uh, employment issues relating to Filipinos. So okay, so Alan said, um, anyone having problems in nursing homes, email me. Ayan po yung email niya, unison two 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 zero zero four eight at aol Pati yung telepono ni Alan binigay naman napaka generous naman ni Alan binigay ang kanyang telepono. Um, Kuya Allen ng, uh, ng Unison. So there you go, um, Allen. Salamat sa pagtutok mo sa One You Connect. At may dalawa tayong uh, kaibigan, si Vilma Masilungan. Mm -hmm. uh, ayun ko may pakita ni Chad. Uh, ayan, embassy should tell sa appointments kanina. Uh, I think uh, ang sagot natin dito kasi wala na si Congen is uh, to check the Philippine Embassy website. Dahil mm -hmm. nakalagay doon ang lahat ng requirements. Okay. Yes. At nandyan din si Emmy Angeles. Meron din siyang isang question, uh, Chad, tungkol sa isang uh, uh, British citizen na pata na hindi makakuha ng hindi yan. Uh, yung may tanong galing sa isang kabayan, bakit hindi makakuha ang isang British citizen na bata ng child benefit? Ayon sa HMRC, dahil daw may immigration control ang magulang, kaya hindi entitled. So, uh, Crystal, is that something you can respond to? Crystal, okay. if, if there is an immigration um, case, is that what it is, Jean? Uh, so uh, magulang? The parents, the parents are not yet resident and oh. they want to give child benefit to a British citizen child. So, yes. Um, you know, when you actually uh, granted your visa, you will find on your uh, biometric residence card that there is a condition on it saying no recourse to public funds or no public funds. So you won't be able to um, claim child benefits. Now, if you actually have any uh, exceptional circumstances, in, in this case, you have lost your job. Uh, for example, then you may apply to the Home Office to have that removed. So it's called the Change of Condition Application. In fact, we touched on this one, Biba, last week in the segment. Natin. So if you are actually in this uh, financial situation now, you can't uh, earn any money at all, no, no salary, no pay, nothing at all then you should contact the home office, make the application, it's actually free of charge as well. So once you have that removed from your uh, visa, then you will get a new biometric residence card, then you can make an application for child benefit. Crystal, I have a question there because Jean is mentioning about a child who's British citizen. Can that child not get um? Uh, government support because it's British anyway. But that's that's a good question, actually. Um, but it has to be the the money would have to be put on the parents' account. So it is them who's making the claim, not the, the child, uh, um, technically. So I would say though, just to clarify, just to be clear on that, I I would 
uh, contact the local authority uh, and, and, you know, and just get more information about that. But that's a good point that you raised, uh, um, Rose. Si Emmy. Uh, actually, just just to add to that, no? uh, marami kasing cases na ganito and uh, a lot of them do get uh, child benefit for their children. So, kailangan lang i-explore natin kung nasaan yung blockade. And as uh, Crystal said, pwede naman tanggalin yung recourse to public funds. But, uh, so, siguro kung pwedeng kumontak sa atin yung kaibigan ni Emmy, then we could uh, advise uh, later on. Yes, and also shout out to Montelibano family na nanonood po sa Pilipinas. Yan ang pamilya ng ating masipag na associate producer, Jay Montelibano MacLeod. O ayan, Jay ha, hindi ko yan nakalimutan. Sasamahan pa rin tayo ng isa nating panauhin ngayong hapon para bigyan pang linaw ang issue at itong mga hinain ng ating mga kababayan na nasa frontline. Isang veteranang nurse din po siya nagtrabaho siya sa National Health Service at um, lumipat sa private sector, sa nursing home at um, aalamin natin kung bumalik na siya uli kasi ang alam ko nung nanawagan ang National Health Service ng mga volunteers at yung mga nurse na babalik sa NHS ay isa siya sa nagrespondi doon at nagbigay siya ng um, dalawang araw ng kanyang uh, linggo sa bawat linggo para magtrabaho sa NHS. So, ang ating pong makakasama ngayon for the discussion, si Francis Michael Fernando. Siya po ay member of the Chief Nursing Officer or CNO of the B BAME Strategic Advisory Group since 2001. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here at um, One EU Connect. Thank you. Yes. Salamat din for joining us. So, we still have uh, this afternoon si Ruby. Kasama pa rin natin siya. Ito po yung nagbigay ng kanyang um, experience na uh, nurse yeah. na nagsishield dahil siya ay may, uh, may, may leukemia. And then, um, pagtatalakayin pa rin natin kung ano, Francis, yung mga issue na dinala ninyo o napag-usapan sa Royal College of Nursing. Ang Royal College of Royal College of Nursing po ang pinakamalaking union ng nursing uh, sa UK. Tama ba, Francis? Ah, uh, that's correct, um, Rose. That's correct. Royal College of Nursing is the largest um, uh, nursing professional group uh, and union in the UK and uh, in the world, with more than um, 100,000 members. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Jean and Crystal, fire your question to. Francis, dahil um, medyo naantala bago siya naka-join naka o naka, nakasama sa atin. Jean? Sige. So, uh, Francis, uh, question ko lang no, dahil uh, itong issue ng BAME or British and Minority Ethnic uh, staff in the in the NHS or generally ano, in British society, uh, parang disadvantage yata tayo. So, ano yung conclusions ninyo sa mga meetings niyo with RCN and ano yung mga gagawin para ma-resolve itong issues tungkol sa mga ethnic minorities? I think it's a Black Asian Minority Ethnic Group. Tama yeah. po ba? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Francis. Oh, um, first and foremost, um, I haven't had any meetings with Royal College of Nursing. So what we do in the CNO Advisory Group is we liaise with the Chief Nursing Officer and her team. So at the moment, the Chief Nursing Officer is called Ruth May. So we uh, regularly have um, conversations with her on how to take the uh, BAMI uh, agenda forward, not only in the NHS, but also in the rest of the UK or in social care and private care. Mm -hmm. sector. So the first one that we have this discussed with Ruth May and her team, the report from public health, high proportion, Portion, mm -hmm. portion of uh, black and Asian minority ethnic um, people who are dying from COVID-19. And uh, at the back of that, obviously, the number of the high proportion of BAMI staff, both in the NHS and in, in social care. And we now know that there are more than 50 Filipino healthcare workers and social care workers who died due to COVID-19. So that's the first one, because in Public Health England's report by Professor Kevin Fenton, 
they haven't really given us any uh, concrete recommendations uh, on how to uh, prevent more deaths um, uh, of our colleagues, not only uh, the BAMI population, but most importantly, those working in the NHS who are more at risk. So that's the first one. The second one, um, we have also um, liaised with Ruth May with regards to the specific uh, issues that the Filipino nurses are having, in, not only in the NHS, but in the social care and private care sector, specifically the, the uh, nursing home and the care sector. So um, specific issues were discussed. Among them were the, like what Ruby has said, she's not being paid her satori, uh, she's only being paid her satori sick pay. So that's one issue that we discussed as a group from the advisory group. The second one was the uh, 150 nurses who are still stranded in the Philippines. So all UK uh, NMC trained nurses who are still stranded. So we're getting help now from the CNO team to be able to help them um, go back to the uh, to the UK to work as uh, nurses and also to help them with, with financial assistance because at the moment most of them are on unpaid leave. Uh, so uh, we will be having discussion with one of the CNO regional officers next week. And then the, the other one is the continued um, issues with um, risk assessments. So staff are telling us that um, the risk assessments uh, whilst working uh, in a COVID area or suspected COVID uh, wards uh, some are not still being done. So it's not mandatory for uh, NHS employers and NHS trust to do that, but it's a good practice. So at the moment we are having dialogue with the CNO to ensure that this is made mandatory. So mandatory means no, um, it has to be done um, and we've got no choice. So we know from evidence and research that black and Asian minority ethnic staff are more at risk of uh, contracting COVID-19 and they're more likely to die when they contract COVID-19. So risk assessments are very important. And at the back of that, you already mentioned about the shielding, uh, which we, which could be one of the actions as a result of the risk assessment. So unfortunately, staff are telling us that they're still not being uh, constantly and consistently uh, carried out, uh, even for those who are working in, in the, um, the uh, COVID-19 world, so which is quite scary. Um, and then the last one, we have had recent appointment uh, from our Filipino communities in Jenny Kagiao, who is now appointed as the Chief Nursing Officer, uh, Black and Asian Minority Ethnic Advisor for COVID-19. So she's the first Filipino who got the job. She was appointed last week, so very, uh, very good for her. So she's going to be working with the uh, CNO strategic group and with the Filipino, Filipino communities across the UK to be able to push the agenda forward. But they have done very well. Uh, actually, the government has done um, very well in assisting Filipinos. There are more to be done, though. Excellent. Rose? Yes, um, bago tayo patuloy, gusto ko lang bigyan ng uh, acknowledgement. Yun pong sketches na nakikita ninyo habang nagsasalita si Francis. Um, yun po ay sketch ng isang nurse na nakabasa sa Middle East Hello, na Rob? Jonathan Husayan. So, um, salamat sa iyo sa mga sketches na ginawa ninyo. Um, nagpapasalamat kami dahil doon Hello, sa effort ninyo na pag-sketch doon po sa mga frontliner natin na namatay dahil sa COVID-19. Um, I was saying, uh, Francis, thank you very much for the information you've given us. Actually, it's a big help. And it's one of those things I was, I was going to raise uh, later on. You, you mentioned about the uh, COVID-19 risk assessment. Um, yeah. the, uh, I'm a solicitor and the Law Society uh, gives us a template. But do you think, uh, is there a template for uh, care homes and hospital? Um, setting out the risk and the, the uh, consequence and mitigation, um, things like that that would assist the employers and the employees. Yes, so um, that's a that's a valid question, uh, Crystal. Uh, there are uh, templates for risk assessment. So the best ones are the the one that uh, has been devised and developed by NHS employers and also NHS England and uh, improvement. So they are now being widely distributed to all the uh, NHS trusts in the country. 
uh, with regards to the social care and private care sector, they have individual um, risk assessment forms or templates that they could use, but they, they are welcome to use the NHS England one and the NHS Improvement one and the NHS Employers one. So the reason I said these two examples of risk assessments are very good, they are um, constructed by experts in NHS England and NHS uh, Improvement and also um, with input from NHS employers so um, and they have been um, recommended by uh, many NHS trusts now and they are specifically for black and Asian and minority ethnic staff working um, in COVID areas or suspected COVID areas um, the problem now is how can we roll this out nationally so that's the main problem but there are templates out there Crystal that is brilliant. Thank you very much. I'd like to, that's the, and I wanted to hear, and, and that would actually benefit Ruby, who's uh, with us at the moment, because yes. what you don't want to happen is really is to fall out with your employer, you know, yeah. you take the case to the employment tribunal that would cost money, uh, yeah. and it would take uh, time. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, you don't really want to go through that. You know, this uh, this COVID nineteen risk assessment is there for both employers and employees, so that you can work together during the pandemic. Yes, that's correct, Crystal. Yes, yeah. So the only problem or caveat to that is we need to empower our nurses or frontline workers, Filipino healthcare workers, to actually. Um, discuss and demand these risk assessments to be done because unfortunately it's part of our culture we don't ask and we don't tend to be assertive in asking for these risk assessments to be done they are there to protect us and most importantly we should have actions at the end of it so whether you will be shielded as in the case of ruby for three months you are redeployed to non-patient facing roles or you will be uh, working from home so those are the three possible actions that can come out or actually you are in a low risk and you could continue to work uh, in covid areas provided that you are fully protected with the who standard ppes okay that's uh, it brilliant uh, thank can you I, Sige, can i also ask you uh uh francis and and ruby no because you, you mentioned this thing about uh filipino culture no, no I, I cannot hear Jane for some reason. Oh, no. You. you can okay. only hear me. <laughs> oh, sige. I can only hear you. <laughs> oh, sige. So, so let me ask, uh, in this case, let me ask uh, Ruby. Ruby, okay. can you hear me? Yes. Ah, sige. So, so you yung sinasabi ni, ni Francis na culture ng Pinoy, no? So, obviously, in your case, nakita ko na matapang ka, actually, lumaban ka at nag-raise ka ng issues sa employers mo, no? Pero uh, tayo ba talaga mga Pinoy ay... Sorry, I'm ay, uh, Sige, okay lang. Uh, kinakausap ko lang si uh, Ruby. Uh, so... Yeah, Francis, Jake is talking to Ruby at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, Ruby, tayo ba mga Pinoy ay hindi kayang basta makipag-usap, makipag-usap sa manager lalo na kung hindi pa permanent resident o hindi pa settled o hindi pa British, ano ba yung kinakatakutan ng ating mga kababayan na hindi nila ma-express, hindi, nila, hindi sila maging assertive sa workplace? I think the tendency po, kasi yung mga Filipinos and nurses are sponsored, so they are under sponsorship visa, so they are scared to voice out kung ano mo yung views nila and opinions to their employers because they get scared na baka hindi marinyo ang visa nila but in my case, kasi dependent visa po, I think I have the guts na magreklamo kasi hindi naman nit sila gumastos para sa akin para pumasok dito sa UK. Although yung sponsorship na ginamit is, ah, uh, yung visa na ginamit is under my husband na, under the employer then Parang natatakot lang siguro mag-voice out kasi ayaw na, uh, maybe either intimidated sila sa employer nila or takot lang sila na mapag-initan. Parang ganyan po ang mentality kasi ng Pilipino. Or the other, may isa pa na siguro nahihiya lang mag-voice out. Kasi ang Pinoy the tendency na uh, nagre-reklamo siya but hindi na re-raise yung concern sa tao na dapat ikakausapin or uh, to the person na talagang dapat niyang uh, erase yung concern. More on sa colleagues niya lang sinasabi yung concern niya kasi takot siyang uh, baka mapag-initan, ganun, ganun po. Okay, so uh, uh, palagay mo, anong kailangan natin para mabago yung ganong uh, approach? 
okay, siyempre takot sa ano no sa maaring mangyari but uh, ang mga tao naman dito ay protektado ng employment laws ng mga batas ng uh, UK sa employment no. Uh, sa so palagay mo ba kailangan natin ng uh, training on cross-cultural communication para ma-express natin yung sarili natin sa sa mga colleagues or managers at a at a level na pareho kayo kahit na ba manager mo siya I think that's, that would that would help po and then the other way is dapat uh, alam ng uh, Pinoy or any other workers alam niya dapat ang rights niya kasi kung alam niya yung rights niya eh, hindi siya matatakot na kung ano man yung gusto niyang ipa ano na concern kasi if we no little gag konti lang yung alam natin yung eh de mas takot tayong magsabi so i think it's it's also effective na yung mga nurses na dinideploy or any workers na dinideploy to uh, papuntang UK they also have a background on the uh, UK rights uh, regarding other working conditions and etc ganun po Okay. Great. Great. Yes, well, having said that, Ruby, I think Crystal has prepared something on um, employment. Correct, Crystal? Yes. Meron ka pa? Short yes. One. yes. A short one on um, on employment. Kasi kung uh, nasa position po kayo o nasa kalagayan kayo ni Ruby na shielding, mayroon po siyang sakit. Uh, pero gusto niya rin magreklamo ano ang mga pwedeng gawin so there you go uh, nandito po ang ating in-house solicitor to give us a little bit of enlightenment on that aspect okay um, so thank you Rose uh, this is for Ruby and, um, and also to uh, other uh, frontliners working sa, ano, sa care homes and in general as well so please take note because this might uh, come in handy but basically you know employers should take social uh, should take socially responsible decisions uh, and listen to the concerns of their staff so ruby in your case your employer should really assess your situation they should really listen to your needs and what you are actually uh, your, your issues that you have Employers and employees should come to a pragmatic agreement, basically a practical solution, a sensible solution about their working arrangements, because that would help uh, you and your employer as well. If individuals need advice, they should approach ACAS. ACAS really good. Uh, basically, you know, they give impartial advice about work disputes. So you know that uh, already, and that applies to everyone as well. You can find them on online. Um, now, uh, discrimination and unfair treatment. So uh, basically, if you feel like you're being uh, harassed or uh, un treated unfairly, uh, for example, if an employee or worker is still being asked to go out to work and they believe they're at, at risk because they're in one of the vulnerable groups, important that they talk to their employer so Ruby what you should do is have a meeting with your employer take down some notes and then confirm in writing what you have discussed uh, and send that to your employer now if you cannot uh, follow guidance with social distancing at work or during travel to work you should tell your employer that they need to follow government advice and stay at home so at this point when actually Francis raised that you need to ask if they have a COVID risk assessment uh, that you can um, peruse uh, and consider because that's really, really helpful. Um, and But Francis that I said the problem at the moment is uh, distributing out the, the template to everyone. Now, unfair treatment and dismissal. An employee or worker is protected by law against unfair treatment and dismissal if it's because of pregnancy, age, a health condition that's considered a disability under the Equality Act. It does not matter how long they work for the employer. It means you don't have to be working for that employer for at least two years um, to claim for unfair dismissal. Now, it could be unlawful, uh, unlawful discrimination on the grounds of pregnancy, disability or age if an employer either unreasonably tries to pressure someone to go to work or unreasonably discipline someone for not going to work. 
So uh, that's uh, basically something you might want to consider. Um, I hope it doesn't go to the point where, you know, that they're going to miss you unfairly. You need to liaise with your employer, Ruby, about your, your current situation, especially in this pandemic. Yeah, they, they shouldn't be taking action against you uh, at all. So that's my advice uh, today. Ruby, mayroon ka pa bang tanong? May karagdagang tanong ka pa ba kay Crystal? Actually, I did uh, approach my employer po through the um, HR. I told them if they have any compassionate ways or measures to help me since I did not choose this situation not to be shielding for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And they only replied that that's the only that's the guidelines. That's what, what the guidelines says in the coronavirus job retention scheme. So I, not, mm -hmm. I do not qualify for furlough. And since we are working in a social care, we are unlike NHS, because it's a social care, we, we don't have a company sick pay. Uh, unlike the NHS, kapag nag isolate sila, they are paid. But the social care is, it's a no work, no pay. So, pan, yeah. Pero ngayon, uh, we receive salatory sick pay na 95 pounds a week. So I told That's good for 28 that, weeks, right? I'm sorry? It's, it's uh, for 28 weeks, you get statutory sick pay of yes. 95 80 per week yes that's correct and then i asked them if they can offer me any i know it's impossible but i told them if they can offer me job from home uh, and they said it's impossible to have any jobs from home because i'm working as a nurse so i did all the measures i i did all my best na, yeah, to squeeze out any compassion left from my employer but unfortunately they are quite less concerned of me because my husband is still working so I don't think they're really concerned um, of my financial uh, security or my financial status because I still have someone who is helping me paying the bills. So that's yeah. the case. See, even if you're in furlough, Ruby, they, they, your employers can still make you redundant. That's, that's the thing. So, um, you know, it's something that you really have to discuss with uh, a union uh, and, and ACAS. ACAS you know they're, they're very good in giving uh, advice and uh and also the unemployment lawyer so if that's something you want to uh, push forward okay basahin ko lang yung mga message dito ng mga kababayan natin na nakatutok um emmy angeles when you connect um think about it <laughs> nurses are under a trust and each trust usually has a Filipino community like what we have in our area. May mga veteran nurse sa mga trust na yan. Luckily sa area namin, they support the newcomers. But that doesn't uh, cover problems within the trust, um, within the trust or hospitals. So thank you, Emmy, for your comment. Tama yan. Kung uh, mga bagong nurses po kayo, hanapin niyo yung Filipino community, groups na pwede makatulong sa inyo. Pero related dyan ang, um, ang uh, message ni John Belmonte. Ayan, oh, Filipino Unite is offering free advice and guidance to Filipinos here in the UK with regard to COVID-19, employment issues, culture, cultural conflicts at work, pastoral care, prof professional growth, and development and in a way that can help our kababayans. Ayan po, si John Belmonte. Thank you, John, for your message. Si Ed David naman, this country is never short of employment rights. So our folks should know how to ensure they are correctly applied to their individual circumstances. Tama rin si Ed. Marami ka talagang pwedeng lapitan na grupo uh, yung mga employment rights groups na pwede makatulong sa inyo. Katulad ni Ruby, meron naman siyang nalapitan. So, at nandito rin ang ating in-house solicitor, Crystal, giving you an advice. Um, sino pa yung hindi natin nabanggit? Okay. Um, that's it. I think may mga nabasa natin na greetings. Pabatiin ko rin ang uh, ating kaibigan na si Nelly Fami na nanunood ngayon. Thank you, Tita Nelly, for watching. Do you have any more shout-outs? bago tayo mag-proceed sa ating last segment. Actually, Rose, uh, again, itong si JJ Jimenez, no? meron siyang message. Uh -oh. uh, her personal message is to be very careful as there are people who take advantage of the situation. 
uh, uh, etc. Et Don't be a victim of fraud. So actually, tinakil natin to last week. That's right. Yes, also. Is, yeah, uh, that is very important. It is very important uh, that people go to the right groups. O kung hindi sila happy, lalo sila kung naloko sila, they must go to report the person or the organization to the relevant authorities. Kaya interested ako dun sa kinukwento ni Francis. No? Francis, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Hindi pa rin. Uh, kasi si Francis, I understand, is uh, uh, an officer of the Filipino Nurses Association. And uh, it's not a fully formed uh, uh, association at the moment, uh, as far as I know. But there are also other groups that seem to be forming up. So there is one here, which is uh, Filipino Unite. I don't know what the state of that uh, organization is. And before there was uh, what's called the Philippine Nurses Association. So as far as I know, mukhang charity siya, but uh, we haven't heard from them for a long time. Kaya hindi mo malaman sino ba talaga yung mga tao o organizations na talagang tumutulong at sino yung uh, mapagkakatiwalaan. So basta ang uh, to echo what JJ said, uh, be careful of being defrauded. Kung makita nyo na medyo may kaunti ng questions, then you need to do something different. Jean, siguro maganda rin i-consider kasi mayroon din namang mga accredited organizations yung Philippine Embassy. So oh. kung uh, maganda rin kasi isang layer yon na makakapag-check ng organization o grupo na kinabibilangan ninyo. Yung Philippine Embassy po dito sa United Kingdom. Uh, malalaman natin kung nandun sila, not just being in a uh, there in the list but of course um we know the community and we will know also kung lihitimo li itong mga organisasyon na ito and we're happy to to share with you na maraming organisasyon kahit nga po hindi related dun sa nursing or sa medical sector na tumutulong sa ating mga kababayan lalong lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya